Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Happy Memorial Day. Now, I say Happy Memorial Day with mixed emotions because it's the day that we have set aside to remember and to honor our fallen soldiers, those who gave their all in defense of our freedom. They paid the ultimate price, their lives. Therefore, it's actually with sad hearts that we say Happy Memorial Day. Because on one hand, we are happy, we're glad, we're overjoyed, we're delighted, we're mirthful even, that we have the freedom to celebrate a federal holiday with our families, to enjoy all the things that families do on Memorial Day, like watch the parades or enjoy backyard barbecues or family visits to nearby battlefields or a visit to a military or several military museums or some of the war memorials. And yes, we're grateful that we can celebrate our freedom. And let's not forget that this is the day that we celebrate the beginning of summer vacations. It's the beginning of our summer kickoff. School is out and traffic is slightly more tolerable. Wives are at mattress sales and husbands are at Lowe's or Home Depot. The smells of spring is gone and the heat of summer has come. Then, on the other hand, it is a sad and somber day as families mourn the loss of their loved ones who gave their own lives in a war they did not start, but were willing to fight. Our mind is burdened with the memory of those family members that will not be digging into the barbecue chicken or grabbing a few ribs off the platter or munching down on hamburgers and hot dogs fresh off the family grill. Therefore, it is with sad hearts that we remember those who gave their ultimate sacrifice for their country. Those of our fathers and our mothers, our sons and our daughters, those of our husbands and our wives, our brothers and our sisters, those of our uncles and our aunts. We must never let their sacrifice be forgotten. Somehow, it doesn't seem right that we only have one day to pause in memory of those who gave so much. They gave their own lives so that we might enjoy freedom. Freedom to be who we want to be. Freedom to say what we want to say. Freedom to believe what we want to believe. Freedom to kneel and disrespect the same flag that you want to represent. Freedom to even burn the same flag that gives you the right to burn it. The very same flag that our soldiers lay down their lives to defend. Which brings to memory that verse in our national anthem that says, and the rockets red glare, the bombs burst in an air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Because our flag still stands for freedom and they cannot take that away from us as long as we stand united, as long as the Star Spangled Banner is yet waving over the land of the free and the home of the brave, as long as old glory is still waving over our capital. May the Lord God Almighty bless the United States of America and may he bless all those countries who are fighting for their freedom. May the Lord bless you. Their sacrifice bought us the freedoms that we enjoy today. Freedom from a tyrannical government system that ruthlessly oppresses its citizens. But as long as we stand united, as long as we're one under God in love 
and in defense of our great country, of our great nation, and our great way of life. They cannot take that away from us unless, of course, we let them. And with that, this week's message entitled, A Day of Remembrance. Turn with me, please, to Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In the day when I make up my treasured possessions, I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Let us make no mistake. Our words, whether good or bad, are all heard by God. And he takes note of both, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Nothing slips past him. God is omniscient. He knows all. He sees all. Look at what the scripture says. Then those who feared the Lord began to discuss with themselves, with each other, with one another. This word then is the Hebrew word as, which is emphatic indicating that the action described in this verse was a consequence of the preceding confrontation, according to the Bible Knowledge Commentary by Craig A. Blazin. Well, if that is the case, then let us appraise ourselves of that confrontation. Malachi chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. It says, Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. The King James Version says, your words have been stout against me, meaning their words were harsh and severe. They were uttered in a state of high degree of intensity. In other words, these people did not seem to have any kind of fear of God at all. They were like the people of today who post ads like this one. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed, as you may be, by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. Sir, first of all, a Christian can no more separate himself or herself from their Christian beliefs as you can from your hatred of your accountability to God. Second of all, brave men and women have died to ensure that we have the right to practice our love for Jesus, the same way that you get to practice your disdain for his love. Think about it, sir. You want atheism, which is your religion, in our government, but do not want anyone else to have that same right. Doesn't that sound a little bit unfair to you? I believe it does. Because no one died for atheism. The communists already have that. It's free for the taken. Without God, without Jesus, without Christianity, where will we get our morals? Oh yeah, we don't need morals. You want everyone to do what seems right in their own eyes. But here is where those kinds of morals will get you. These are some headlines. Me. 21st, 2024, the Washington Ex Examiner.com posted this headline. The German government is softening its child pornography laws. MSN.com posted, did Germany decriminalize possession of child porn? Firstpost.com, 
Germany believes this criminalizing possession of child pornography may be a good thing. Dailycaller.com Germany downgrades child porn possession to misdemeanor. And those with no fear of God are trying to normalize child molestation altogether. They want it to be a normal way of life. Not only that, but there are six states as well as Washington DC where there is no limit on abortion. But let me advise you, it will not stop there. The appetite and lust of depraved minds is insatiable. It knows no limits. And that is where immorality will take you. Because without God, there are no morals. Even now, they're changing the guidelines for treatment of trans kids. They've lowered the minimum recommended age for starting gender transition treatment, which includes sex hormones and surgeries. Surgeries could start as young as 15 years old, stating that it is unethical and harmful to withhold early treatments. Puberty blockers can start for girls as early as eight years old. This is what APNews.com said. I want to quote. The blockers can weaken bones and starting them too young in children assigned males at birth might impair sexual function in adulthood, although long-term evidence is lacking. They went on to say, sex hormones, estrogen or testosterone, starting at age 14. This is often lifelong treatment. Long-term risks may include infertility, weight gain, along with strokes in trans women and high blood pressure in trans men, the guideline says. But to withhold this treatment from an eight-year-old who doesn't even know his or her right hand from her left or his left is immoral. It's unethical, they say. The long-term risk is infertility. You can never go back. They will never be able to have children. They will never be able to reproduce. But let us continue reading the rest of verse 13. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of us keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed Evil doers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. They said in the scripture that we just read, it is vain to serve God. In other words, it is useless. It profits nothing to submit to God and to serve him and to obey him and to live a life of righteousness unto him. So they grumbled against God and said harsh words, harsh things were spoken about him. They did not want his fetters on their wrists, nor did they want his shackles on their feet. They would not and did not burden themselves with obeying his commands, nor heeding his decrees. They wanted to be free and clear to do as they pleased. Their arrogance showing. So the God haters, those who have no fear of God or no fear of burning in hell, acted arrogantly and spoke stout words against the Lord God Almighty. And then those who feared the Lord, those who trembled at his word, saw and heard all that was going on around them. They heard the stout words with which the atheists slandered God and they began to talk it over amongst themselves. They began to speak with each other things, good things, righteous things, things about God. Now the scripture doesn't explain what they talked about exactly. Matter of fact, it doesn't say what they talked about, just that they talked with each other. 
and they talked it over. According to the Hebrew word, as, as we just spoke about, that's translated then, it would stand to reason that it stemmed from what the atheists, the God-haters were saying and what they were doing. And God drew near to listen to those who feared his holy name. He drew near to hear the words that came out of their mouth. Or as the scripture puts it, God paid attention to what they were saying to each other. Not only did he hear, but a book of remembrance was written before him about those who feared him and those who esteemed his name. That means that God is not about to lose them. Neither is he going to forget about them, but rather he will count them as his own. He will make them a part of his treasured possessions. They will not suffer loss, nor will they be condemned in the judgment, but he will spare them and they will enjoy eternity with him. And that's our ultimate goal. Just like a book of remembrance was written in the presence of God, the names of our brave soldiers who died, who went missing, who were prisoners of war, are written on walls. They're written on monuments and sheets of granite and on the hearts of their loved ones. Their names are written on the hearts of their fellow soldiers who served right alongside them, but were blessed to come home alive. Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., for instance, contains the names of every single soldier who died or was MIA or who was a POW during the Vietnam War. Every single name. There are over 58,000 names written on those slabs of stone. The site is one of the most visited memorials in the U.S with more than three million visitors every year. God also has a book called the Book of Life, where every single name that has accepted his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior is written in that book. And on that great and dreadful day, the day of judgment, if your name is not written in that book of life, you will suffer loss you will be forever in the lake of fire. Here's what I want you to understand. Brave men and women have died to give you freedom. Freedom to choose. Freedom to prosper. Freedom to pursue happiness. Freedom to be whatever and whoever you want to be. You're free. Why? would you so easily and so quickly give it all away? Why would you give all of that up for little or for nothing? Why do you trade your freedom for scraps? Do you think that you alone will escape? When they say that you will have nothing and you will be happy. Do you suppose that somehow that precludes you? Our soldiers fought a foreign enemy, an enemy they could see. What if the real enemy is here, walking amongst us, an unseen enemy, an enemy bent on destruction and world domination? What if the real enemy pretends to be a friend, pretends to do what is best for us, and to always have our best interests at heart. But all the time, they're taking more and more of our wealth until there's nothing left but ghettos to live in and bugs to eat. You will have nothing, they say, and you will be happy. Let me ask you, what if the conspiracy is not a conspiracy at all? All I'm saying is, consider the facts. 
Let us not take lightly what others have paid so dearly to give us. Just because we don't have skin in the game does not mean it is not valuable. This Memorial Day, I want us to remember those of our sons and our daughters, our fathers and our mothers, our brothers and our sisters, all those who gave their lives for their country and their way of life. They died for us. Their death meant our freedom. But the freedom they fought for is only temporary freedom. We have one whose death gave us life and life eternal, eternal freedom. His death bought us life, life everlasting. Yes, we honor our fallen soldiers. We honor their families. God bless you for giving us your sons, for giving us your daughters. Thank you. May his mercies ever be upon you. But there's one who is greater. There's one who offers a greater promise. And it is to him whom we must all give an account. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Son of the living God. Have you accepted him as Lord and Savior? If you haven't, let today be that day. If you are ready to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, all you got to do is to repeat this prayer after me. Here's the prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I accept your free gift of life. This weekend, Memorial Weekend, is the beginning of my new life. For I accept it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is to get a Bible, a physical Bible, read your Bible every single day, highlight it, memorize those verses. There's coming a time when Bibles will become illegal. Find a Bible-believing church that you can be discipled in. Join that church. Not a progressive church, but one who believes in holiness, who believes in righteousness, who believes in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who believes there's coming a day when we must give an account for every word, every deed, every thought. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. When Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you should be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And there we will be with him forever and ever and ever without end. Thank you for joining us. The Lord loves you. Jesus loves you so much. We love you. Happy Memorial Day. I'm Kenny Yates. Be blessed and stay blessed.